Welcome back everybody, Steve from the Pinball Room. Thanks for joining us today. We've got a video we're gonna go through and talk about the staircase mech and the optical switches we've got here wired up. Finally went through and installed it, got all the wiring routed through the channels and in place, and then they weren't all working. So we've got some troubleshooting tips for you around soldering, properly crimping your wires, and also just how to go through and troubleshoot. Is it your emitter? Is it your receiver? Is something else going on with it? We've got a fun trick of how you can go through and actually view the invisible infrared light coming out of these emitters. So that's gonna be helpful as well. But I'd be remiss to not start first by giving another shout out to our latest patron subscribers. We got Charles, thank you so much for coming in at the skill shot level and all your support on that, watching the videos and now chipping in. And then Stefku, that's how I'll pronounce it phonetically. Thank you so much guys for joining. It really means the world to me. I'm hoping that all this just makes it much more realistic for me to keep going around to different shows. I can't wait for TPF to come around and bring this machine and watch all you guys play it and get to chat with you all and get to know you more. It's, just, it's gonna be a blast. March can't get here soon enough. At the same time, it needs to take us time. We've got a lot left to do. Um, oh, and then lastly, I gotta give a shout out to Brax. He's another local guy here from Utah. Just happened to random run into him at an outdoor concert last week and he came up and said hi and it just meant the world to me. So thank you so much Brax for taking a minute to come out and, and say hi and so we could we could chat for a second. So um, yeah, it was awesome, just made my week. All right, thank you everyone. All right, with that, let's jump right back into it, all right? We are now, I'm just trying to get the final like mechanical things all put back together. You'll notice we've got our full left ramp back in. We got the switch hooked up to it. We have our right ramp in, and all of its switches are back in place. The habit trail down here, everything's back in. Though conspicuously, we are missing the staircase because um, one of the last things I need to do. We printed this out and we talked about it last time, but I hadn't gone through and actually got all the optical sensors in here. So let me show you this a little more closely again where we ended up here. So this is the mechanism, and we've got slots for optos here at the bottom of the stairs, so we know when the ball first goes in. We've got optos here on the outside. Whoop, slide down. If you remember, that's gonna be used for, for the horseshoe lanes, to, for the sensors that on the other side of that, they're actually shining out. And then at the top, we've got another pair to know when the ball is at the very top. So I've gone through, ran the wires down through with all the connectors, and now we just need to install it and hook it up. And one of the things I want to show you, we'll get there is, it's a cool trick that I found through some other folks of, how you can double check to make sure your emitters are actually shining and working, even though it's like infrared, you can't see it. There's a really simple way around that's pretty cool. So um, anyway, we're gonna go through and it's kind of like time lapse getting these hooked back in. One of the things that I like here about this on the bottom is modeled in these channels. So we've got these wires, they'll be able to come down, fit along this channel. Boop and be nice and snug on the play field and then just drop down through the one hole. Can you see that? Through the one hole where the wires will, will come down behind like where the motor is. So anyway, that's gonna sit all down and nice and snug. So this is again, not a final play field, right? It's kind of rough, but I have a hole here. I had a hole here, but then I realized that the mount for my stepper motor kind of goes there. So I actually made it another hole just behind that. So my final white wood will need to move these holes back a little bit, so they're symmetrical. We've got a little bit of a cutout here on each side in the back so the wires can go through. So just gonna feed these wires through. Okay, nice and snug. Nothing's caught. We're in our channel. I've had one, have one opto here that um, I haven't connected yet, so we'll go through and talk about the wiring for that also um, with the fast board on the other side. All right, so in this rat nest of wires, again, I'm not proud of my wiring. We'll get past that though. We'll get better the next time around. Um, but buried back inside here, I have these two fast boards. These are, if you remember from prior videos, these are the ones that go through and take the 12 volt power in and they kind of modulate it and make sure it stays a nice consistent 12 volt for these um, generic optos. And then you've got pins for to power out four different sets of emitters, all right? So I've got a total of eight emitters I'm running. The receivers, remember, they're just gonna snap in to their own little connectors here, if I can show one. They're gonna snap into their own connectors here and these are the ones that go back to the I.O. boards, okay, for the actual, the receivers. And I don't remember which one's which, so we'll put it in and we'll see if it's going to the right one. If not, we'll swap them. And then these wires with these connectors are the ones that will go onto this board, okay? And I've been a little bit undelicate and I, I tore this one, so I'll need to take that off, 
recrimp it and put a new connectors into this piece here because that just that just came loose so that's not good i need to be more careful with those wires okay anyway we're going to go through and plug those in so that those can get power from the board we don't really have very many of these connectors so if you remember we can kind of slide a very small precision flathead screwdriver in here lift up the flap plastic and then try to back it out We have our handy dandy crimper. We'll stage it so it holds it. Twist the wire to make sure they stay snug because these are stranded. All right. Now when you go through and put these pins inside this connector, you do need to kind of pay attention because if you remember on these optos, for the emitter, we have the, the A and the K for like the anode and the cathode, I think is what it stands for, okay? And it does matter which way you go because it, it uh, the fast board actually has a nice little legend, it has an A and a K on these pins. So you know that from the orientation I have it, I guess I have these boards upside down because fast is upside down, but the A is the pin on the left and this piece is going to go in with these flanges pointing up anyway so i need to make sure the wire on this side is the a goes to the a and with these one's um, kind of more of a copper color and one's more silver and i know that the copper is the one that i have for my a is the anodes so you'll want some way to like again like be color striping the wires or something so you you know when you come down through which ones for your anode and that's going to go on the the certain side of your little pin for me it's going to go on this one, I know it's too small for you to see. Just make sure you're doing the right one on yours to where it matches up to the A on that fast board. Okay, and it just will snap in. And then the other wire, of course, if your cathode goes in the other slot, you just have the two. So as long as you get the first one right, the second one will be right also. Okay, and just push it until it clicks. And then, like I said before, I have, I have one I haven't soldered up. When you get these from Pinball Life, they're clean, very flat. There's no flux, there's no solder on them. So you want to go through your soldering iron, heat up some solder, and go ahead and just um, prime, prime them with a little bit of flux on each side, okay? And that'll make it way easier for you then to, to add the wire into it. I have my soldering iron plugged into my service outlet up here, handy dandy. I'm gonna turn that on, get up to temperature, about just over 700 degrees Fahrenheit is where I run mine, again, copper for my anode. So I just hold it to where the wire is hitting the, the soldering iron tip is hitting the wire and the flux at this like a little bit of an angle and you'll know once that flux melts you're good and then you're just going to push that wire down into it and just with your other hand make sure you have it to where you can kind of apply, apply like a little bit of pressure to kind of hold it down in while you pull the iron away. It allows it to cool and hold it in position. If you just pull the iron away you're not careful of this the wire can just kind of pull away also. Just want that to stay in position while it cools to make sure that it's down inside the solder and not just kind of like just barely sticking on top. You want it pretty well surrounded by the solder if you can. Remember, when you're soldering, <laughs> safety tip, if you start seeing a bunch of smoke coming up off the solder, do not breathe that in. It's highly toxic and not good for you. You might even want like a gentle fan blowing to kind of keep it away from your mouth. I think a mask is kind of overkill. They recommend that. I never use a mask, but just don't be breathing it in. All right, get him in. Tuck the wires. There we go. Now let's go through and test them all, make sure they actually work. All right, we'll start up MPF. my stairs running until I push the homing switch. All right, we'll hide this display. Now in here, I know this is hard to see. I don't think you can see that very well, but if you remember, the green bars mean these are switches that are being tripped, right? So as I hit a switch, you start seeing more of those green bars flashing up, right? So right now I've got top stairs, Opto says it's already tripped. That's not right. 
All right, this opto says it's switched, but it might just be in the wrong position. It's loose. The diverter opto, this one says it's tripped. That's not good. Bottom stairs, which one is not, which one is working? So none of these are working, so we gotta figure out why. Oh, oh, one of these I didn't have hooked up. That's important, hook him up. Let's see if he's working now. All right, the top stairs is now saying it's working. So this one I noticed is wired backwards. That's not good. After all that careful saying if I had these in the right place, I put these ones in backwards. All right, let's try again. So the bottom stairs, we tripped that. You'll see it now, right? But you can't read it, but that actually says top stairs. So I had this wire switched. Top one is now bottom, so those need to be swapped. Horseshoe left and right. Neither one of these are working though, so I need to double check these. Oh. <laughs> well, no wonder. <laughs> this guy right here, I don't have any wire soldered to him, so no wonder he's not working. All right, this guy though, he should be working. There's a fun way how you can also double check and make sure, like, is it the emitter or is it the receiver? Like these ones, the bottom and top are working, but this guy and this guy are not working. Okay, and so it's like, okay, is the receiver messed up or is the emitter messed up? So one way to, to check and see if the emitters are working is to take a cell phone, it's a normal cell phone, and these cameras and these cell phones, and some of them maybe the back camera won't work because they're more, maybe a little more fancy, more high powered, but for sure like your selfie camera and most even, even back facing cameras, but most cell phone cameras, if you just put it in front of the light and you like have it on to where you can see the picture and like, or you know, looking to take a photo, you'll actually be able to see a light purple light. That's the infrared light. that will pick it up and it'll display it on your screen. So like if I take this and I reverse it to where I can easily see on screen what's going on and I put this down in front of the LED. Okay. <laughs> so this cell phone is weird. The selfie camera was not picking it up like it does on my iPhone. This is a, a, a OnePlus 6T. But the back facing camera is picking up really, really good. So I'm gonna to try to move this around and have you be able to kind of, we'll do like some inception with the cameras and see if you can catch it. All right, you watch on the screen. There, you see that, how it's lighting it up? And then purple. Yeah, you can see that, right? Anyway, so that tells you if it's working. We know these two are working. Can't quite get this one like down low enough to get it well, but you can see it's there. But now this guy. I see purple for him as well. So maybe the switch isn't working on that one. But yeah, so there you go. That way you can tell if the light is on or not. All right, so we got them all working. Purple light's working good in our phone on everything. It turns out, so I had a couple of these I needed to get reversed. Um, this one, again, the receiver just was not wired up, so we wired that, connected, it's working good. It's working good. This one back here behind the inline drop targets wasn't working. Um, one of my connectors, I guess, I didn't have crimped quite right because I messed with it and played with it, swapped out other ones, they were all working just fine. As soon as I cut off and replaced those connectors and put them back in, now it's working, so my crimper usually does a pretty good job, but I must have just not quite paid enough attention. The really, these really skinny connectors, the .156, I think, connectors, you have to get them in just right. The, the ends are so thin and small, you get them crimped just a little bit off. It can, it might have, hold for a little bit, but they, they can wiggle loose and just, anyway, you gotta be careful with those crimp connections. So that all seems to be working good now. So you won't be able to see it probably very well, right? But green line for the top of the stairs, bottom of the stairs, this horseshoe opto, that side of the horseshoe is working. And even this guy back here showing up. So we got the switches for the ramps back in. Those are all firing. So now we can go through and get these diverters hooked back up with the code that I got from our, our buddies at the show. And after that, we should be 100% ready to do really good play testing and start working on our game rules and figuring out how that's gonna work. Just need the custom code for the stepper. Right now it just goes to one step. So still working, waiting for um, our friend Anthony to help us with that so we can go further with the staircase. But otherwise, mechanically, I think we are at like a final mechanical prototype state. 
right? We're gonna really test all the shots, start working around game rules and all that. So should be in good shape. So after we do our live stream, all the great ideas I get, we can compile them in and start trying to code them all up and make them work, okay? All right, so hopefully that was helpful. The little cell phone trick I think is pretty slick. It does a good job of just letting you know, are we at least getting power and this is the, the emitters working and so it helps you kind of debug and figure out what else is going on. And yeah, I think we're all, all set on that side. So thanks for watching guys. We'll catch you on the live stream coming up on Saturday. If you can make it great, if not, I'll post it up afterwards. You can catch it afterwards. Love everybody's thoughts and opinions on how to improve the rules. I feel like once we get the rules in place, then we'll be able to start dictating kind of where we want, which inserts, like some of the placements are gonna be obvious, but depending on the rules, we might want an extra insert to denote a mode or something else, right? At least that's the way I'm looking at it. I could be wrong. I've never really programmed a pinball machine ever before. So, but that's the way I'm approaching it. So I think it's gonna work out. Do some game rules, get some foundations down. Then we can start figuring out our placement for all of our inserts. Then we'll go back to the CNC and have videos talking about how we're gonna cut out those inserts and get them in, in place and sand it smooth and then on to lighting. So, all right, all downhill from there, right? Lots to do still. Thanks you guys. Again, if you haven't started your own pinball machine, get off your butt, do it, come join the fun. There's a bunch of us. Thank you everyone who's been sharing their posts and been sharing uh, some of the rules they've been working on. I really, really love how much everybody is just willing to share everything. I think it's great. Like there's not really any crazy secrets here, secrets here, right? The more we can share and learn with each other, the faster and further we go, right? Okay guys, we'll catch you next time. Thanks so much, goodbye.